And welcome, listeners, to another episode of This, That, and the Other. We are joined today by our first guest that has over 100 national championships, and that is Seabrake. He brings into the guest chair today 105 national championships, almost 350 conference championships, and has totaled over 8,500 victories with an 887 winning percentage. So, Seabrick, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me today. I'm glad you can make it. We'll go ahead and kick things off with the first question on the list, and that is, do you prefer a team with one huge class, or do you prefer a team that is more balanced across all the classes? Well, I prefer a team that's balanced across all four classes, but that being said, it's probably been 15 calendar years or so ago. I played with a guy who had a brother that was at the University of Iowa, and one of his classes had needed one player. <laughs> That's and unbelievable. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of ridiculous at the time, but he was in the Big Ten, so they had, you know, several bowl teams. So as it turned out, the guy had like 15, 15, 15, and one. And that one year, he had his $15,000 for the player, and then he had another sixty, sixty-five thousand 65,000 in bowl money. So he was golden on that one guy that he really wanted. So, you know, I guess it's pretty much equal either way. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting twist to, to look at that. I I could see the advantage, especially if you've got a conference where everybody's fighting tooth and nail for that one stud every year, and you come in with yeah. that kind of money, you're assured to get him. Yeah, he, you know, he just threw in his sixty, seventy thousand dollars on the guy and was golden. And then the rest of the year, he had like fifteen, sixteen, seventeen for the other three years. So, you know, that's not a bad situation. But I prefer, you know, balanced as much as possible. Okay, when you uh, look for a new team, like you're applying to a, a team moving up, so to speak, uh, it, it, would that be the case there as well? Then, well, I. That's not one of my top priorities. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I don't even, if I'm looking for a new team, I don't even take that into consideration. Okay. What do you look for? I look, I like a balanced team, particularly with my position players, quarterback, running back, wide receiver. I try to, I, when it's all said and done, I want five quarterbacks, five running backs, and five wide receivers, one from each class and one red shirt. So I try to pick a team that either has that already or is in a position to get it that way pretty soon. I don't really care about how many offensive linemen or defensive linemen or linebackers they got. But the quarterback, running back, and wide receiver, I really want five of each when it's said and done. So when it comes to practice philosophy, and does that change as you move up to the different levels, or do you try to apply the same type of practice time uh, throughout each of the levels, division that you move into? Uh, I, I, keep, I keep the same practice times. Back when... Several years ago, before they went to, uh, I think it's 3.1 that we're currently in, I didn't, so. I didn't practice any uh, team concepts. I didn't practice any formations. I put it all into uh, players, and it worked, you know, very, very well. And then when they came up with the 3.1, everybody was talking about formation this and formation that, so I did go to practicing formations as well as players, but um, I run all my teams exactly the same way. All right, great. Well, that's going to wrap it up for our first session, so don't go away. Come back and join us right after this. I remember when my grandfather gave me my first candy. 
a worthless original. It stuck to the roof of my mouth, so I pried it off with a flathead screwdriver. But it flew through the air, and wouldn't you know, it landed in the toilet. Well, being just a wee tyke, I didn't know any better. So I fished that worthless original out of the crapper and popped it right back in my mouth. It still tasted delicious. Hours later, the candy stuck fast to my fingers like rubber cement. Then I had an itch on my pee-pee, and it stuck there too. Well then, the family dog became interested in the worthless original candy and began to lick it. When Mother saw what was going on, what with the dog at all, she threw a bucket of scalding hot water on us to separate us. It worked, but the shock of that hot water made the dog clamp down on me. And, well, I've been worthless ever since, if you know what I mean. Worthless original candies creating lasting emotional scars since 1895. Welcome back, everybody. We're joined by C. Breaks. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're from, uh, family life, anything that you're willing to share with us today. Well, I'm about 15 miles outside of Atlanta. Um, I have two daughters, one in Indianapolis and one in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I'm widowed. My wife passed away about three years ago, so it's just me and my dog, you know. Sorry to hear about your wife. Thank you. Any real yeah. life coaching experience? Uh, what sports and what levels? No, actually, my dad was a uh, high school football coach many years ago, but uh, I coached Little League Baseball, and that's my coaching experience. <laughs> when you first started playing this game, did you have any mentors, and if so, who, and what did you learn the most from them? Well, back when, and it's been probably 15, 16 years ago, um, I conversed uh, often with a fellow named Captain B-71. Mm-hmm. I, believe, I believe his name was Brandon. He was a doctor in uh, Syracuse, New York. He helped me a great deal. And back Way back when, I actually called uh, What Is Sports. You could actually talk to him back then. And uh, there was a fellow there named Joe Conte and another man by the name of Carrick, I believe. Yes. And, you know, I could actually ask them questions, and they would actually answer them. And a lot of that has carried through even through today and through all the changes we have, particularly with uh, recruiting. Yeah, the Joe Conte was uh, was active on the boards and did some trial and error stuff and had a lot of the div chats from time to time. And Tarek was one of the guys that started What If Sports, and he's moved on to other endeavors. I think I posted a video profiling his activities on the message board several months ago, but... Very interesting guy, and, you know, his legacy lives on. I mean, we're still playing the game, you know, going on 20 years later. Yeah, you know, now if you send in a ticket, you're lucky to get an answer. And back in those <laughs> days, back in those days, you could pick up the phone and say, can I speak to Joe? And he'd answer your question. So, yeah. you know, things have really changed in uh, in that light. Uh, after that little stint, um, probably my biggest uh, – Help came from Ben Ben Macbeth and um, Ed Zimney, EZ37. Good coaches. Yeah, all of them have uh, some good reputations following them around, that's for sure. Yeah, we've all been around a long time. How much time do you spend on scouting each opponent um, when you get ready to play them? As the years have rolled by, I spend less and less time, to be honest with you. I I set up an offense several years ago, and I haven't changed it to one iota, regardless of who I'm playing. Um, I pass 95% of the time, and everybody, I guess, knows it, and I just have kind of a philosophy of here it is, uh, beat it if you can. I do uh, I just spent probably 15, 20, 30 minutes um, scouting 
his offense trying to set up my defense. And more than that, uh, if it's a national championship game, you know, I've got five days between the end of the season and the and the bowl game, so I'll spend some time in that area. But I don't spend anywhere near what I spent ten years ago. What, do you use the expanded play-by-play info to make your second-half adjustments once the game has started? Uh, if so, what do you look for? The only changes I ever make defensively is if I'm behind at the half, I may alter my um, – uh, formation percentage of who I'm throwing to. That's the only change I ever make. It's going to wrap it up for segment number two. Don't go away. Damn. <laughs> Start your day the Wheaties way. Don't just get up. Get high. <laughs> For a limited time, get a free Wacky Roach Clip or mini fun bong in specially marked boxes of Wheaties. Silly will have it. They're great. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Spearmint? You're close. Give up? It's wintergreen. <laughs> All right, yeah. Gee, your ass smells terrific. Cover up that funk stank with new rectal mints. They make your farts smell <laughs> so good. Every mint contains a gleaming drop of ping sphincterol. So the next time you feel gassy in public, let her rip. Let's both try one. Welcome back, folks. We're here today visiting us is Seabreak, and I've noticed that across the world, you have four teams currently, and all of them are elite. Uh, is that a goal, to have all your teams be elites, or do you enjoy playing in the other divisions as well? Well, I really don't like playing in the other divisions. Uh, I like the break between the end of the season and the bowl games. I I just don't like the playoffs because it's just an everyday ordeal. So, you know, I I enjoy 1A for that aspect. And then, of course, back when, the goal was to get an elite team. Yeah, yep. Well, you know, once the bowl games are over, uh, it's time to recruit. And when you evaluate a recruit, do you put more emphasis on work ethic or potential? Well, I'm probably going to be the only person you'll ever talk to that's going to give you this answer, but I don't care about either one of them. (laughs) Well, you're probably right. You're probably the only one that's ever going to give me the answer like that. And why is that? Why do you discard both of them? Well, I've just found over the years that if you recruit good players, you know, if you get an offensive lineman that's 90-90 and – 60 athleticism and 60 technique, I don't care if his work ethic is 20 or 60. He's not going to get but to 92 or 93. So I've just scouting reports and assistant coach scouting reports, work ethic. I don't even look at it. You know, I could I could care less. I mean, I'll glance at it, and I don't want some guy that's got a work ethic of eight. But... <laughs> You know, if, if I've got two recruits and one of them's got a work ethic of 43 and the other one's got a work ethic of 22, I may take the 22 guy if he's got uh, stuff I'm looking for as far as speed and athletic uh, speed and elusiveness and hands. Over the years, I've just found that it's not as important as it's cranked up to be. Okay. Now, we've talked quite a bit about offensive side of the ball. What's your preferred defense? 4-3 or 3-4. I've I've got one, and I have in the past changed teams from 3-4 to 4-3. Right now, three of my teams are 3-4, I mean, excuse me, 4-3, and the other one is 3-4, but I I like 4-3. Well, part of that being, um, I just feel like I get a a better balance against the run and the pass. 
And that's just a, a personal feeling. It's just something I've always done. What qualities do you look for in a pass coverage linebacker? Speed, athleticism, tackling, and uh, excuse me, speed, tackling, and game instinct. I try to keep strength around, you know, 70, 60, somewhere in there. I don't want a guy that's got 40 strength, but it's basically speed, instinct, and tackling. Well, that wraps up the three sessions today. We've appreciated you being with us and definitely enjoyed the conversation. Any parting words? Well, um, I thank you very much for having me on, and um, I hope it's, hope it's gone well for everybody out there. Hope everybody stays safe and, you know, do their part and be careful. Absolutely, and amen to that. Well, folks, you've been listening to This, That, and the Other. I'm your host, Magic. Come back for our next episode. We'll see you then.